Buongiorno, everybody, and uh, welcome to our first Lunch and Learn here on Adventures with Sarah. Uh, our first guest for Lunch and Learn is my friend David Tordi. Buongiorno, David. Buonasera. Buonasera. Davide or David? What do you prefer? As you like. <laughs> when I'm in Italy, I call you Davide, but when I'm in Seattle, I call you David. <laughs> That's fine. Um, so, uh, come va? How's it going in Orvieto these days? Tutto bene. Everything's going well. We are sheltering home. We've been sheltering home for almost two months now. Fortunately, we have a nice yard, but uh, it's been difficult, but the whole country's been fighting well, I think, <laughs> using a, a war term. I don't like war, but it's like a war, so. Uh, yeah. Are you going stir crazy yet? Sorry? Are you going stir crazy yet, just yet? No, fortunately, fortunately, I have a lot to do. I have a lot to do, so I'm happy. I'm writing, I'm creating music, arranging new songs, working in my yard, a lot of nice things, so. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah. So uh, just to introduce you to uh, all of the people who are watching, uh, my friend uh, Davide, David Tordi, has been uh, working for Rick Steves for about five years. He is a tour guide, a musician. He has a band called Bartender, uh, which plays covers and original music and they're just a lot of fun. Uh, it's a trio and they've been in the U United States and I've heard them play uh, in Italy. Actually, I have hired him a couple times to come to some of uh, my group dinners. Uh, and also, the thing I wanted to let you guys know about is that uh, David, because as you can tell, we are now unemployed. <laughs> We're all kind of thinking about ways we can share our talents and our gifts and also make a little bit of money. So David is available to hire as an Italian tutor. And I can tell you he is an excellent tutor. And so if you're interested in learning uh, Italian language and practicing with David, you can do that with weekly lessons. Uh, he charges $30 a lesson and they are 50 minutes long and you can do them on Zoom or Skype. So if you're interested, um, go ahead and uh, you can shoot me a message and I'll get you in contact contact with David, uh, but we'll give you more information about that at the end of our chat today. But just want to make you know that that's, there's a great way you can support uh, tour guides that are excellent, that are currently at loose ends. So please do support me and my colleagues as we figure out how to uh, support ourselves in the next year. <laughs> anyway, so the reason I invited you on, David, today is that I thought it would be fun to talk a little bit about Italian culture and uh, music. Uh, and what does it, what is Italian music? What is it these days? Because I know that a lot of us know sort of the traditional songs, you know, we knew Funiculi, Funicula, we know Volare, but um, what is the Italian music scene today like? The Italian music scene is kind of a global scene like everywhere else in the, in the world, either it's Western world or, or, or Eastern world. But um, there's still a lot of uh, a, a strong attachment to our music tradition, you know, musical tradition from the opera time to the old Neapolitan tunes. And there's still a lot of regional music going on, even in the younger generations. People are proud of their background and, uh, and uh, you know, their roots. Yeah. Um, so what kind of music do you focus on when you are uh, playing? When I play, um, my band and I play a lot of, um, Mediterranean music, mostly Italian music, but also when we say Italian, we speak about a lot of different influences. Uh, we also have, uh, uh, you know, Arab influence, Balkan influence, Spanish influence, French influence, and so on. So our, um, we concentrate a lot on that. And of course we love world music. So we, we also play a lot of English music, French, Spanish music, American music. We love rock and roll, blues, swing, jazz, and um, we play different, different genres of music, but the sound that we have, I would say, is definitely a Mediterranean sound. Mediterranean sound, yeah. How did you guys start your band? <laughs> the band started a long time ago. It started 20 years ago, actually, wow. as a duo, because we were bored or we were sick and tired of going around with drummers. So the other guitarist and I in our former band decided to go sometimes on acoustic bands so we could perform in smaller venues and we became popular because a lot of venues you know in italy uh, i see a lot of friend friendly faces fr and friends uh, you know size really matters in italy things are very small so the bars the clubs the venues are so small that most of the times they don't they cannot fit a drum set oh. a drum and usually drummers are big guys so uh so no space for drummers and then we went to 
the acoustic duo. And from there became a trio, and we've been a trio since 2006, and we love it. Wow, I had no idea that that's how you started out. That's really great. Um, so just a little curiosity about like um, regional culture. So you're from Umbria, and mm -hmm. Umbria is in central Italy for people that don't know. It's uh, north of Rome, which is the Lazio region. Um, so how, what makes Umbria different than other regions? I know every region is really proud of, of their you know, local character. Um, Venetians are very proud of their proud history. Sicilians are very proud of everything, that they invented everything. Um, everybody's got their thing, their point of pride. What is the Umbrian point of pride? Uh, I mean, Umbria is the best place in Italy. <laughs> you know, that's what makes it Certo. It's easy to explain, you know, Chet, no. Oh, no. no. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Umbria is a tiny little region. In, it's one of the 20 regions of Italy. It's, each region is unique, I have to say, because today we're, we call them regions, but most of them, until 150 years ago, were countries. You know, it's not easy to understand this concept, but our, 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 our culture is a crazy patchwork of different cultures. People in my area, Umbria, never, ever, ever spoke to people south of Rome until 1861. Or yeah. unless you were a billionaire 150 years ago and you could travel. So now we're the same country, we're on our drive. <laughs> but we were not in communication. Well, and your, your region, Umbria, was part of the Papal States in the past. So you yes. were dominated by the church um, versus, mm -hmm. you know, the, an hour south of you in Naples. That would have been uh, the yeah. Kingdom of the Two Sicilies. That would have been exactly. the Papals. Yeah. So, yeah, completely yeah. different dialect, different culture. Yeah. 20 minutes away is the Grand Duchess of Tuscany. Just past the river here, 20-minute yeah. drive, you're in the country of Tuscany. That Today it's a region, and the whole world knows it. Tuscany, Chianti, Florence, Siena, Pisa, and so on. But until 150, 60 years ago, that was another country. So we were next to So what do you think other. characterizes the people of Umbria then? People of Umbria, I would say, are, um, it's definitely an agricultural area. We love our, our, our agricultural roots. People are country people. People love and, and are attached to the, to the to earth, you know, to, to the land. Uh, very quiet, quiet area. We're less than a million people in a small region. You can drive from north to south of the region in an hour and a half, uh, around 45 minutes. We're an hour north of Rome, where it's much busier and more crowded, of course. But in, in, in Umbria, lifestyle is cozy, mellow, very laid back. And, and yet we have an incredible amount of art, architecture, and history. Because also Umbria is the, is the dividing region between the Etruscan culture, which is the, the, the West Coast Central Italian culture, where Rome is, and then the Umbrian culture, the other side of the center of Italy. So we are kind of the midway. Yeah, and I have to say, I think Umbria is one of the most underrated regions of Italy. It's the place that I probably know better than just about any other region outside of maybe Sicily, because that's where I went. The first, I don't even know if I've ever told you this, David, but when I studied in Italy uh, in the 90s, I spent a lot of time in, in Umbria because my professor lived in Civito di Bagnoreggio, which isn't actually uh, in Umbria, but it's very yeah. close. Yeah, so it's I spent a lot of time in Orvieto. So that area is uh, near and dear to me. And I've people always say, if you could live anywhere in Italy, where would you live? And honestly, I would probably live in Umbria. It's just so chill. That's what I like about it. Yeah, it's easy. Civita di Bagnoreggio is 15, 10 minutes from my house. I live right on the border. So between Umbria and the next region, Lazio, the region of Rome. So speaking about regions in this very area, it's kind of, it's, it's hard to explain because we're in the middle of a, a, a three region crossroads, Tuscany, 10 minutes north, Umbria in where we are and, and further east, and then Lazio, the region of Rome, so. Yeah, so you're right in the middle. Uh, yeah. So just for people that maybe don't know Umbria well, I know there's a million cool things to see, um, but what are some of your favorite things to go and visit, sites, museums, whatever? I personally really enjoy Orvieto and all the Etruscan history, uh, yeah. and of course visiting our, our dear friend Cecilia Botai. That's one of my highlights for Umbria. Yeah. But if you were to take people to Umbria, what would you take them to see? Uh, if you like art and, uh, and architecture, definitely the must-see places are uh, Assisi, the, the town of San Francis, and, San Cat and, and, and Saint Clair, Santa Chiara. Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, I would definitely suggest Gubbio, one of the outstanding hill towns of Umbria. It's off the beaten path, and yet it's one of the most beautiful hill towns in, in Italy. I would say Orvieto, my hometown, also because of its cathedral. But if you like the, to learn about the origins of Rome and the ancient Roman culture, places like Orvieto, which are in the Etruscan pre-Roman civilization area, are important to know. And if you like the underground sites, uh, two or 3,000 year old underground sites, you want to learn how we used to live three millennia ago, Orvieto is a good place to go. And then if you like natural parks, I would suggest definitely the east coast, this side of Umbria, uh, the, um, the Marmore waterfalls in the area of Terni, the Palmerina, the Nera River Valley, east towards Umbria and Marche, which is the eastern region. And if you like driving in nature, through nature, uh, I mean, in the US and Canada, you have outstanding um, uh, parks. And in Umbria as well, if you like nature, there's plenty to go. It's called the green heart of Italy. It is Not for a good reason. And actually the Cascata della Marmora is absolutely miraculous. I, I had never even heard of it, but Cecilia actually suggested I go there when I had a few days off. It's crazy. They, it's a waterfall the Romans built. They can turn it off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Today. yeah, and that was the most exciting thing because you go at the right time when they turn it on and they turn it on what like twice a day I think it is and when they turn it on it just goes <laughs> it's really yeah. it's so incredibly impressive and I'd never even heard of it. Yeah, what they did there the Romans, you know, I'm talking about masters of engineering even today there, there would be masters at engineering. They diverted the upper river in the upper plateau into the lower river plateau you know, to, yeah. to, 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 uh, to increase the amount of water pressure in the low valley so that the valley could be populated by people. So the waterfall, it's, it's the biggest waterfall in Europe. And it's just it? an hour drive. Yeah, yeah. It's the, the highest, the highest um, waterfall in Europe. Yeah, it's seriously impressive. And I had no idea it was there. I mean, 20 years of traveling and I'd never heard of it. So that, yeah, that is definitely something I'm, I want to take people to see that because that really impressed me. Gubbio as well. I think I went to an architecture school because we were uh, studying uh, small piazzas and Renaissance towns, but that's also a real beauty. Um, I'll so, take you there. Whenever you want, I'll take you to the Marmore waterfall. You're on, you're on, absolutely. Uh, I've been kind of um, milling around with the idea of a week-long tour of Umbria. So that might be coming for next year. We'll see. And we'll definitely yeah. have to hire your band if I do that. Um, sure. So one question that I thought I wanted to ask you, I kind of know the answer, but I thought it would be fun to share, is that you speak very, very good English, of course. Uh, and uh, some people maybe don't know that you are married to an American. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So still with me after two months of quarantine. <laughs> still You're still me. married. <laughs> I hope. Yeah, I hope. <laughs> so, um, just uh, would you mind telling us a little story about how you ended up meeting her, or why you came to the U.S., or yeah. why you speak such good English? I think that's a great story. Grazie. Thank you. See, um, years ago, now 14, 13, 14 years ago, my wife Daria, her, her name is Daria, she's originally from Boston, Massachusetts. Um, she was studying in Florence. She was mastering, um, she was doing a, a postgraduate uh, um, course in um, interior design in Florence. Uh, and then her cousin, who's one of my best friends from childhood, He's originally from South Carolina. Now, my little town of Vieto, Umbria, and Aiken, South Carolina, in 1996 or seven, so we were little kids, made this cultural exchange, this sister city exchange. You know, kids from Aiken, South Carolina, that were 15 years old, came to Orvieto, and kids from Orvieto at that age went to Aiken, South Carolina. So you can imagine what kind of shock. And uh, years and years later, my wife Daria, cousin to my friend Nate from Aiken, now he lives in DC. Um, she was like, I'm in Florence, I wanna explore more. Do you have suggestions? And he's like, talk to my friend David, he knows all about it, he lives right there and he's a good friend of mine. So he put us in touch and uh, I sent her a list of 10 destinations between Florence and my town. And the last one was my town. And she got, she decided, I don't know why, to come visit my town. So I gave her a tour, uh, a guide, a guided tour, and uh, and now it's 2020. So special tour just for her <laughs> and her friend. There were two, and uh, yeah, it was a good tour because in the meantime I was having an American journalist from New York 
writing a syndicate story about my little travel agency back then. And uh, so we were going to the best wineries and restaurants and hotels. And we got, we got my wife and her friend to tag along for free. So they experienced the best of the best in the area. So they never wanted to leave. What a way to impress a girl. <laughs> yeah, but an Italian man will go to impress a woman. <laughs> <laughs> so then you lived in the United States for a while, right? Yes, for about four and a half years, I lived in, uh, in Boston, near Boston, Massachusetts, in Arlington, in Arlington. Ah, okay. And so now you've been back in Italy for how long? Now it's nine years. We've been back for nine years. Okay. And now I, I know that you're really heavily involved in the Orvieto tourism and cultural administration. So what is your, the, the thing you do? I forget what it's called. Um, your, what is your organization called? Um, so I'm also partnering in this uh, little travel agency still today. It's called yeah. Tessio Tour. And yeah. we do uh, little custom day trips, day tours of Orvieto, uh, Civita di Bagnoreggio, CC, our little area, mostly daily trips, half day and weekends. And, um, and since I've been doing it, I've been partnering for now over 15 years, years go by quickly here as well. Um, we, uh, we ended up um, being involved in a lot of, you know, um, helping the local community with uh, travel advising. And, and yeah, so I'm, I'm one of the local people who work in the travel business, in the travel industry. And especially in days like this, people are really getting together, sticking together to try and, and relaunch and, and, re and promote, you know, after this crazy moment ends. Oh yeah. Yeah. We've all got a lot of things cooking. I've got a lot of things cooking too, because I think that as soon as this is all over, I have a feeling everybody's going to be on the first plane back to Italy. I know I for sure am going to be doing that. So, um, so I thought it would be fun if you wouldn't mind, would you play a little bit of music for us? Certo. Si, si, of course. I got okay. my little guitar here. If you want, I can play some uh, Italian music. If you want, I can explain a little bit of Italian differences, you know, Please. Italian music difference. Because, you know, music comes from language and Italy is made of many different languages. People from Naples and Rome and uh, Sicily, even today, they speak their own dialects. They don't understand each other. They understand maybe 10, 20%. The rest is another language. And for some cultures, like the, the deep north and the deep south, people, let's say, from Venice, speaking to somebody from Palermo, Sicily, they understand probably 0%. It's like an American speaking to a Chinese or a, a Mexican, if you don't know any Spanish. So it's like, wow. But Italy is smaller than California. You have to keep in mind. So it's very important to know. You're not talking about American China. You're talking about you know, Washington and New York. <laughs> That's the, the size of our country, a little more, but so, um, and yet we have a lot of differences. Music is the result of cultural differences. We are a very ancient melting pot here and I'm right in the middle of it. So I love both the North and the South and I try to take the best out of both, out of all. Um, uh, for example, I'll give you a little ex examples. In our area, we speak an accent that's very close to the Roman accent. Yeah. That, that's of course, uh, co that comes from the ancient Roman languages, Latin and the post-Latin dialects. And uh, in, in Rome, all, a lot of the traditional music have two subjects. It's either eat and drink with your friends or somebody died, it's very sad. So these are the two <laughs> subjects. There is no- You're gonna say no love. In between. <laughs> no, 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 love, love, no, love it's, you know, Sometimes it's overrated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But for the Romans, sure, yeah, but no. Somebody died in the Tiber River, so let's play a song. Or uh, I ate and drank for the whole night. Let's play another song for another night. So that's, these are the two main subjects. I'm joking, of course. But really, one, one, a happy one that I like is called La Società de Magnaccioni, the company of the eating uh, the fellow, the the fellowship of the eaters, something like that, you know. Okay. It goes like this. It's a typical stornello romano, and this is the 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 movement. Fateci largo che passiamo noi. 
sti giovanotti di sta Roma bella, siamo ragazzi fatti d'or pennello, e le ragazze famo innamorà, e le ragazze famo innamorà. Ma che ci frega, ma che ci importa, se lo stervino ci ha messo l'acqua, e noi gli dimo, e noi gli famo, ci ha messo l'acqua e non te pagamo, ma però noi siamo quelli che gli rispondiamo ancora, è meglio il vino dei castelli che questa zuzza società. And it keeps going, but <laughs> grazie, grazie. So yeah, it's a joyful song. The music moves very happily. And in the meantime, the song stops and the singer said, Hoste, host, bring me another drink. The food was not enough. And then the host comes and then the music keeps going. Uh, it starts again. So it's a music that has to do with taverns, inns, social places. It's a very social music. Fun. Yeah, that I can imagine being in sort of a taverna with a, a nice jug of wine and just sing, singing with my friends. Yep. Certo. Si, si. All righty. What's next? What's next? Uh, well, for example, uh, the, the most famous uh, music, traditional music uh, of Italy uh, is the Neapolitan music. Yeah. Still today, the Neapolitan music is studied in music universities, uh, conservatory as a unique music style that has and a why lot. Why is that? Why is that? I mean, I know that, but I don't understand what the difference is. Why, is it, has, why is it different? Because the Neapolitan music has a lot of features that are really unique. Uh, the, the Neapolitan music is the result of a lot of influences. There's a lot of Spanish music, Moorish music, Arab music involved, like in all Southern Italian traditional music, except that the Neapolitan music the Scuola Napoletana, the Neapolitan school of music in the 18, 17, 18 and early 1900 produced thousands of outstanding melodies. So you have incredible melodies using a very particular music scale, only typical, only uh, unique of Neapolitan music only. And, and, then, and then you have these incredible, so powerful melodies and a style that reminds you of an Arab country, but then takes you back to Naples, takes you to Rome, to Spain and North Africa, and yet it's all Napoletano, in a language that's only Napoletano, it's Neapolitan. We get, remember, Neapolitan is completely different than Roman. There's an hour and a half drive between the two big cities. They don't speak the same language. They speak Italian today, but up to 150 years ago, no. Well, but even now, I mean, w when I've been in the countryside around Naples, and if somebody's speaking Italian to me, it sounds like they have marbles in their mouth. Like, I can't okay. understand Neapolitan dialect at all. I, yeah. It's, also, it's Napoletano, really Napoletano, like Romano, Napoletano, Neapolitan, Romano, Roman dialects. Napoletano is a language. It's, it's definitely a language. It's not, to me, it's not a dialect, it's not an accent. It's a language, not only to me. And you know, we have colleagues from Naples who speak, which speak spectacular Italian, and they yet have a fantastic sound. The, the, the Neapolitan sound is spectacular to me. But then you have the, the straight, you know, the, 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 the hard dialect, the, the, reg, the, the thick dialect yeah. of Naples, which is not comprehensible. No, I mean, for me, it's not. It, I can't hear it at all. Yeah. I wanted to just tell you a very, uh, uh, speaking of your accent, the Roman accent, the central accent, I was, uh, I think it was maybe 10 or 15 years ago, I went and I took a, an Italian sort of like advanced kind of course to try and brush, you know, kind of polish my abilities. And when I started speaking Italian to the teacher, she looks at me with this like horrified look on her face and she goes, where did you learn how to speak Italian? And I said, Rome. And she goes, oh. Yeah, I should have known. <laughs> it was a Florentine person, and they were so offended because they're like, "Yeah, you sound like." I mean, basically, they said you sound like a Roman street kid. <laughs> yeah, but it's normal. You know, Rome and Florence are three hour, it's three hour, three hour drive. Yeah. The Romans speak like this: "Buongiorno, come stai? Tutto bene?" In Florence, it's like, "Oh, buongiorno, come stai? Tutto bene?" Yeah. It's very different. It is very different. Yeah. Three hour drive. Yeah. 
it is really different. And I had no idea that I had picked up that accent. But apparently, according to this teacher, I had a really strong like Roman because that's where I, I learned on the streets of Rome, like going to my, the coffee bar and talking to the Fruity Vendolo. That's how I learned how to speak Italian. So, yeah, it makes sense. But I had no idea that I picked that up. And boy, so snobby. Oh, well, you know, teachers are sometimes they are, you know. <laughs> oh, teachers. Oh, teachers of English. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. sure. So I would love for you to play for us one of those songs you mentioned about people like dying in the Tiber River. I want to hear what that's like. Ah, well, uh, let me think. I don't remember right now one on top of my head, but um, but I can I can fake the melody. You know, I can I can yeah, actually the melody. play the melody. Of, not not the lyrics. I don't remember, but yeah. like something. It goes like. Mm, Very ominous. You know, it's very different then. So <laughs> the subject relates to that. Like, he died or she died. What am I going to do without him, without her? Because there's also love in the song. And then it's all, it's all about memories of the past that are now long gone because the person has disappeared. Yeah. You know, so. Very sad. Um, so Neapolitan music, you're going to give us a Neapolitan See, song? Well, we can pick one of many. I was thinking a classic one is also Le Mie. Also Elvis Presley sang it in English. It's now or never. In Italian, in Neapolitan, is Usole Mio. And it goes like, it goes like this. Let me, let me see. E bella cosa, na giornata e su. Daria serena, tu buona tempesta, bell'aria fresca, pare già una festa, che bella cosa una giornata e sole, ma una du sole, più bello in te, oi sole mio, sta in fronte a te, oi sole, oi sole mio, sta in fronte a te, sta in fronte a te. That made me feel like I was on a gondola, David. Thank you. Grazie. See, I'm, mi I'm missing Italy right now, so it's so nice to, to for you to take me there with music. Grazie. Thank you. So that was also Le Mio. It's a, song, it's a pure love song in the Neapolitan movement, which is one of the Neapolitan movements is... That's why people study Musica Napoletana, Neapolitan music. The scale is unique, the movement is unique, the melodies are unique. And I, having spent time down there, I know that at least traditionally in the past, a lot of that music was also intended to be for dancing, right? Certo, sì, sì. In fact, yeah. in fact, you can dance at it. Even if it's a slow dance, it's a dance. Yeah, it's more tr the traditional kind of Neapolitan style dancing uh, that kind of coordinates with those, with those rhythms, so. Kind of cool. All right. Uh, let's see. How about something um, more modern? Maybe something, something more early modern. 20th century. Something Just swinging and jazzy. Something more modern. Let's see. Well, 20th century, we can have a little uh, Italian swing. You know, after the American big bands came out, came out in the 30s and 40s, Italians started swinging as well and we also developed our own kind of style of swinging of swing music one is from fred buscaglione he was a master uh, musician of the 50s unfortunately he died very young in not even in 1959 one of his masterpieces is buonasera signorina 
good evening, young lady, it means. And it goes, buonasera, signorina, buonasera. È bello stare a Napoli e sognar, mentre il mondo sembra dire buonasera. La vecchia luna che sul Mediterraneo appare. Ogni giorno ci incontriamo camminando, come par che la montagna scenda in mar. Quante volte abbiamo detto sussurrando in quell'angolo più bello del mondo. Quante volte ha sussurrato amore tamo. Buonasera signorina, kiss me goodnight. Buonasera signorina, kiss me goodnight. Ratturu, 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 Buonasera signorina, buonasera. Com'è bello stare a Napoli e sognare. Mentre il mondo sembra dire buonasera. La vecchia luna che sul Mediterraneo appare. Ogni giorno ci incontriamo camminando, come par che la montagna scenda in mar. Quante volte abbiamo detto sussurrando in quell'angolo più bello del mondo. Quante volte ha sussurrato amore tamo. Buonasera signorina, kiss me goodnight. Buonasera signorina, kiss me goodnight. Buonasera, signorina, che è smigonai! Grazie, grazie. So, I'm curious if, if you happen to know, I mean, a lot of the Italian music that we recognize, at least when I'm on tour, the stuff that people recognize is all from that time period, from that sort of 1940s, 1950s. Like, that must have been a really huge flowering of musical talent in Italy at that time. Yeah. It's, it's what we call the dopoguerra, il dopoguerra, the, the after World War II moment in Italy was, not only in Italy, in Europe, all over Europe, and in America as well, it was an incredible rebirth. That's when people started affording for the very first time buying their own first car, the famous Cinquecento, Fiat 500, the little mini car. That was the very first car that almost everybody could afford, and it came out right after the war. And then, you know, people started experimenting new dishes because you finally had access to ingredients again and people started buying new clothes. The industry went back and better. And that's when also, you know, after a big depression, culture springs. And that's what I'm really hoping for in these days, you know, after these terrible, terrible moments, I'm sure things will, and they're already happening to me, in my opinion, things are moving forward. People are finally, you know, getting a sparkle. Yeah, well, and I think that we're being forced to to kind of think of new ways to go about more creative ways to do our jobs, more creative ways to connect. I mean, I think that this is fantastic. Would we have done this otherwise? I don't think we would have, you know, and how fun it is to connect with people and, and share culture across whatever kind of platforms you can. So I don't know. I think that this is actually a really cool moment that can lead to a lot of new and beautiful ways to share across the world. So. Yeah, so who knows, maybe it will be uh, similar to the after World, after World War II atmosphere, who knows. Yeah, yeah, people compare a lot this moment here to the dopoguerra, after the war, you know. Um, there was nothing, not much left. A lot of industry was, uh, was uh, blocked, devastated, or just went out of business, you know, things. People had to rewrite their own rules yeah. in general. You know, it's not, this is not exactly the case, of course. Fortunately, nobody's bombing anyone, nobody's killing anyone. A virus is killing a lot of people, but that's another story. You know, people are together trying to, to make, it, make things better than before, not like before. People are thinking about making it better than it used to be. Yeah. So no, we don't make the same mistakes. Well, and I think that we as uh, tour guides and tour organizers, and that we can, I think we, ha we need this moment. We need this moment because we need to figure out a better way forward with travel and tourism because things were getting a little out of control. I think it was, everything was getting crowded and there wasn't a method behind the madness, but I think that this is a good opportunity for us to organize, so. I agree. All right, so what else do you want to play for us? What can we play? I can play, um something more even more modern let's see let's see something 
Um, okay, let's see. Let's do a, a song from one of my from my favorite songwriter, Italian songwriter Fabrizio De André. Okay. Fabrizio De André. I'm gonna play. Um, Bocca di Rosa, Bocca di Rosa. It's a funny song, actually. I mean, funny. It's not funny, but the subject is funny. It's about this girl, very um, easygoing girl that comes to this little village and men like, like her very much. So she starts, she dates a lot of people. And, uh, and then she, she becomes basically the girl of the village and everybody likes her so much. And it goes like... <laughs> La chiamavano bocca di rosa, metteva l'amore, metteva l'amore. La chiamavano bocca di rosa, metteva l'amore sopra ogni cosa. Appena scesa alla stazione del paesino di Sant'Ilario, tutti si accorsero con uno sguardo che non si trattava di un missionario. C'è chi l'amore lo fa per gioia, chi ce lo sceglie per professione. Bocca di rosa nell'uno nell'altro, lei lo faceva per passione. Una notizia un po' originale, non ha bisogno di alcun giornale, come una streccia dall'arco scocca, vola veloce di bocca in bocca. Alla stazione successiva, molta più gente di quando partiva, chi manda un bacio, chi getta un fiore, chi si prenota per due ore. Persino il parroco che non disprezza, tra un miserere e un'estrema unzione, il bene effimero della bellezza, la vola accanto in processione. Con la Vergine in prima fila e bocca di rosa poco lontano, si porta a spasso per il paese, l'amore sacro e l'amor profano. <laughs> so, <Lyrics>, buddy. <laughs> yeah. sí, sí. That's okay. a great. Oh. That's very funny. <laughs> I, I made the short version. I had to cut it because it's a longer one. But anyway, he uh, Fabrizio D'Andrea is my favorite also because he's able with his words to put pictures in in you, in front of your eyes. You know, I if I sent you the translation of the song, but you can find his lyrics and easily translate them online or find them translated. He, he was a painter with music, really. What, comparable to somebody like Bob Dylan or the, the famous, you know, uh, American songwriters who in the 60s and 70s made like, with a song that were able to give you a full picture. Yeah, so it's not just a song, it's a story. No, 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 no. He always was able to express a specific moment in history, never politically, uh, either one side or the other. He was always like neutral, but always, sharp at painting you know the the big picture oh that's wonderful I, you know i haven't even heard of, heard of him before are there any other uh, sort of well known to italian um songwriters or composers that we should know about yes uh you should because really there's a lot of uh italian italian music is strange because you have a lot of international italian music when of course pavarotti and the opera and bocelli um, of course, those are uh, masters, but a lot of our folk music and traditional songwriting, uh, it's not famous in the world at all, but it, it, it's really, it's really good quality music. I would suggest uh, listening to, for example, again, Fabrizio De André, the one I, I, I just played. I would suggest Paolo Conte. Paolo Conte. Mm -hmm. Um... Paolo Conte is, um, Paolo Conte, for example, is a beautiful, beautiful uh, songwriter. He's from, from the north of Italy and he's still active. He's getting, a little, he's getting a little older now, but still he's in good shape. And um, Paolo Conte, for example, is the one that, that made like, Via, via, vieni via di qui. Niente più ti lega a questi luoghi, neanche questi fiori azzurri. It's wonderful, it's wonderful, it's wonderful, good luck my baby, it's wonderful, wonderful, that's wonderful, I dream of you, chips, chips, rap it over it, chip on, chip on, boom, rap it over it, over it, over it, over it, rap it over it. So, via con me, come away with me. Paolo Conte, you have Zucchero, Sugar, Fornaciari, incredible musician who worked a long, for a long time with Joe Cocker from England. Joe Cocker and... Um, I think Zucchero is pretty well known in the United he, States. Zucchero yeah. is famous, yeah, Zucchero yeah. is more famous. He just played a beautiful solo uh, mini concert in front of the Colosseum. Of course, in these days, the Colosseum is lit up but deserted. And uh, he, he made a duet with Bonovox from U2. Oh. Um, 
in the this you know decent duet you can find it online Cute. as well as Bocelli's concert in the Duomo of Milan that he played he performed a few oh that brought everybody to tears that was really moving yeah another incredible uh, songwriter a musician Italian musician that is really it's not famous in outside of Italy but he's one of the best I think in my opinion of all times Lucio Dalla D A L L A Please listen to his music, it's incredible. You know what, David, I think maybe you and I should write a little blog piece about that um, and put that yeah. up so that people would know uh, some music to listen to. Since we have free time and we don't have a lot to do, uh, it's a good moment to go through your local library or through iTunes and try to find some, some good new music. By the way, your music with your band Bartender, is where is that available for people to if they want to listen to your band? If you want to listen to our music, you can find it on, on iTunes, Spotify, also on our website. There's a section for music. And uh, we're actually finalizing, we're slowing down a bit because of this COVID-19 thing. But um, we're going to come out with our brand new album very soon. And it's an album. This is, um, this is the first time we share this piece of information, but I'm happy to do it with you folks. And wow. you, Sam. Um, it's an album that's dedicated to the Italian culture and the American culture. And it's an album made of 10 songs, five Italian songs played in the American style also, and five American songs played in the Italian style. Oh, and that's so cool. Influence in the lyrics, in the melodies, in the arrangements. And we're happy to, to we're finishing it. We're, we're left with two, three songs to finalize and then we'll come out with it. That's so exciting. So if people want to support Bartender and support your band in this time, because, you know, this is a, a good thing to do, uh, they can buy your music on iTunes then? You have uh, albums already there? Yeah, okay. you can buy our music also on our website, iTunes, yes. Cool. Sure. That's but great. the website is bartendersound.com. Bartendersound. And then there's a shop section for music, digital or CD. It's Fantastic. Okay. So do you have a new song you can play for us as our, as our closing song? Do you have something new or a bartender so, song? Something new. So the new album that's coming out, it's, a, it's an album um, of cover songs rewritten for us. And one, actually one song, let me, let me take, uh, I just need a couple of details. Give me a second. You know, a, a classic American song that you, I'm sure you know, it's called um, Bang Bang. Yeah. You shut me down, bang bang. Yeah. I hit the ground. Yeah, our version is also in Italian. So we, we dared <laughs> to translate uh, part of the lyrics. And here's the Italian version that's gonna be on our album. Giocavamo da bambini, fantasie di gioventù, io di nero e tu di bianco, ma vincevi sempre tu bang bang, mi butti giù bang bang, a terra ormai bang bang, io resto giù bang bang, per sempre te ne vai. Questo tempo ci ha cambiati, io non so più dove sei, se tu ancora ridi e pensi a quel gioco insieme a me, bang bang, he shot me down, bang bang, I hit the ground, bang bang, that awful sound, bang bang, my baby shot me down. Music played and people sang, just for me the church bell rang, now she's gone, I don't know why. Till this day, sometimes I cry. Didn't even say goodbye. Didn't have the time to lie. Bang, bang. He shot me down. Bang, bang. I hit the ground. Bang, bang. That awful sound. Bang, bang. My baby shot me down. Here be a Here be a Ghost Rider.
I love that. That was fantastic. So this is what, what's going to be on your new album. Yes, it's going to sound much better because we're a trio. <laughs> and, um, but anyway, yeah, this is a little taste of our new album that's going to come out soon. We actually, we, we, couldn't, we couldn't really figure out a date. We had agreed on the spring, but then this whole thing happened. So we're working on it. But uh, as soon as it comes out, I'll let you know and, and you can listen to the whole album. Absolutely. That sounds great. Well, thank you so much, David, for joining us today and playing for us. I, I would love to have you on again and uh, figure out another way to share your music because I just enjoy listening to you play. You're just ah, so thank, gifted. Thank it's you. really a pleasure. Um, and if people want to get in touch with you for uh, English or for Italian lessons, how do they do that? Sure. Uh, if you're interested um, in Italian lessons, English, probably most of you already know it, the language. <laughs> It depends. <laughs> My email is David Tordi, T O R D I, at gmail.com. And uh, you can drop me an email and I'd be happy to, to help you or even just give a free uh, advice if you want to learn more Italian. Yeah, or if you're coming to the Orvieto area ever, you should definitely get in touch with David because he has a lot of great contacts uh, in the city to help you have a better trip when we're allowed to go. So thank you so much for bringing a little bit of Italy home to us. Uh, I, I feel, I was feeling very sad this morning and missing my adopted country. And I really feel like I had a little brief moment of being there, at least with music. So I really appreciate it, David. Grazie. I would like to say hello to all of, all of you. Sara, grazie mille. Hello. And uh, a, a bunch of friends that I see uh, following us. Thank you. Grazie, grazie, grazie. And also, I want to say a special uh, hello, ciao, to our friends in Sicily. Uh, this hat comes from my last Sicily tour. I oh. bought it in Palermo. Yay. I was a man making hats, so I wanted to wear this. And uh, Sicily, again, is one of my favorite regions in the world. Mine of course, too. after Umbria, after, after Umbria, don't, don't get me wrong. But grazie, grazie. Sicily is, uh, is definitely a part of my heart. That's a big, a big piece of, of who I am. And I love that. They call that, what do they call that? They call it a coppola. Do you know why? Coppola, sì. Yeah. Do you know the story please, behind that? Please explain. No, I'd like you to. <laughs> I don't remember the reason why it's called coppola, I have to say. But uh, it's definitely a coppola. This is a coppola siciliana. Coppola Siciliana. So, so basically, I think that the, uh, anytime that, well, anyway, it's a long story, but the, the Coppolas are, are associated very much with uh, men who, uh, who would go out and, and socialize sort of a working, a working hat. So, and you can find them in Sicily everywhere, and they're interpreting them in different ways with different kinds of certo. fabrics like that. So anyway, um, it has been a pleasure, David, and thank you so much again uh, for, for sharing your, your talents and your skills with us, and we'll talk to you again. So, ci parliamo presto, speriamo? Prestissimo, super presto. Ciao, okay. everyone. Ciao. Ciao. Grazie.